Hello everybody, my name is Tyler Lloyd and I'm out in my garden right now. It is a lovely crisp March morning and I want to talk about my favorite documentaries, films about sustainable agriculture, our food system, and homesteading. These are films that I have watched myself and some that I'm, I haven't watched just yet but I'm very interested in. And I've got a kind of special announcement, a thing coming up that is very timely. So if you're watching this video within the first week of it being released, uh, please stay to the end for that. Some exciting news for myself and just some cool opportunities uh, in next weekend. So let me start off uh, by a film that is a YouTube video. I'll have links to everything down below to where you can find them, a little synopsis and streaming. But this one is called Homegrown Revolution, came out in 2009 and was uh, very inspiring for kind of my garden that I'm trying to build right now in my backyard because this is a family in California that is growing almost all of their food in a small, you know, sort of urban setting, suburban setting. Despite their limited space, the family has transformed their backyard into a thriving urban homestead, practicing self-sufficiency and sustainable living. The documentary showcases various elements of the Gervais' homestead, including organic gardening, composting, rainwater harvesting, and animal husbandry. Through their innovative approach to urban farming, the family is able to produce a significant portion of their own food, reducing their dependence on commercial agriculture and minimizing their environmental footprint. The film serves as an inspirational example of how urban dwellers can reclaim control over their food supply and cultivate a deeper connection to the land, even in the midst of a bustling city. So definitely check out that film. It's pretty short, uh, but very, very inspirational. The next one on my list is a much longer, bigger budget film, The Biggest Little Farm, which came out in 2018. Now this documentary follows a filmmaker, so the, the person who is uh, producing this farm is a filmmaker, that's why a lot of the shots are so beautiful, uh, John uh, Chester and his wife Molly as they leave Los Angeles to start a sustainable farm in Moore Park, California. Over the span of eight years, the Chesters in encounter numerous challenges, including wildfires, and learn valuable lessons about regenerative agriculture, biodiversity, and ecosystem balances. The Biggest Little Farm showcases the beauty and complexity of natural farming practices and illustrates how a holistic approach to agriculture can restore degraded land. I really like this film. I think it's right now it's on Disney and a few other platforms. Again, links to everything down below. One of the criticisms I've seen about the film is the fact that what they did, you know, they had a lot of startup capital from investors. Yes, um, they have a very large operation, but just because um, they had investors and money doesn't mean that a lot of the practices that they show in the film uh, can't be incorporated in someone's backyard or, you know, smaller plot of land. So definitely, I don't think that movie uh, should be disregarded. The next one is Food Inc., which came out in 2008. Uh, I've watched this film several times and I've, I have uh, grown in my understanding of agriculture. I've realized that you know this, this film kind of just barely scratches the surface on a lot of the problems and I and now have sometimes like disagreements or don't think that they fully capture everything. But I think it's a great starting point for a lot of people interested in agriculture. So Food Inc. provides a comprehensive overview of the modern food industry in the United States and it examines corporate control of food production, the prevalence of industrial farming practices, and their consequences on health, environment, and animal welfare. Through interviews with experts, farmers, and consumers, the documentary sheds light on issues such as factory farming, genetic modification, and food safety regulations. So definitely think it's worth checking out, especially if you're getting just into this space or generally interested in where your food comes from. And there actually there is a Food Inc. 2 that like should be coming out maybe the end of this month, next month. So very excited to see that and see um, you know, if it builds upon that and just goes deeper and deeper into our understanding of our, our food system. Uh, the next one, Back to Eden, which is available on YouTube. Back to Eden explores the garden philosophy of Paul Gauchy. I am probably butchered that Gauchy. I probably should have looked that up before. We're gonna just get, okay, Paul. Paul, sorry for butchering your name, who advocates for natural organic gardening methods based on the principles of Back to Eden gardening technique. 
The documentary follows Paul as he demonstrates his approach to gardening, which involves covering the soil with a thick layer of wood chips to mimic the forest floor, uh, conserve moisture, suppress weeds, and improve soil fertility. Through interviews and on-site footage, uh, people can learn about the benefits of this low-maintenance sustainable gardening method, including increased yields, healthier plants, and improved soils. A lot of the things that were in that film, um, that was probably like one of my first introductions to a lot of like no-till practices and just the idea. Um, so I think it's a good starting off point. I wouldn't treat everything that's in that film as like the end-all be-all. I think it needs to be applied to your certain location uh, you know, with some of these ideas. So definitely see how you can incorporate maybe some of that stuff in your garden. That's why my whole area is wood chips and while I'm, I'm doing a lot of no-till kind of back to eden s stuff. So I definitely would check out that film, Back to Eden. The next one is a series on BBC called Follow the Food, and it's on season three right now. Hopefully they, they keep making them. These are nice because they're, they're 20 minutes long and they do you know, several sort of uh, stories within the show, uh, you know, BBC kind of PBS uh, setup where there'll be multiple different segments covering a wide, wide range of topics about food. Definitely interesting to see, you know, sometimes I see stuff, it's like, oh yeah, I already knew about that. But j just seeing the, the footage and being reminded of different complex issues with our food system, with, you know, um, soil loss and degradation, um, sustainable practices, what people are doing all over the globe, uh, different innovative technologies, and how maybe like sometimes technology isn't the answer and we should go back to old ways and incorporating the, the nexus of them. It's just a very interesting show. Again, it's uh, on season three right now, 20 minutes uh, a piece for those, and you can uh, currently watch them for free um, on the BBC, uh, so just so you don't have to pay for anything. So that's, that's really nice. So definitely check out Follow the Food. Uh, Kiss the Ground, uh, so this is on Netflix and Vimeo from 2020, and then there is a follow-up uh, from the, the same people. I'm blanking on the name of that film, but I will put it right here. Uh, but Kiss the Ground, this one is interesting uh, because it's sort of one of like the first kind of mainstream um, films that talks about you know soil science and no-till that really got a lot of attention and how uh, we can better incorporate generative agriculture practices uh, through no-till, through actually incorporating uh, livestock into farming practices and not having it segregated where you've got you know livestock over here, field crops over here, but creating a you know a biodynamic system uh, that replicates nature uh, and you know incorporating nature into the space and, and not segregating you know that this is controlled farmland and this is nature. It just talks about a whole lot of different concepts. Again, very well done. Uh, it's on Netflix, so definitely check out Kiss the Ground. The next one on my list. Uh, so this one is The Real Dirt on Farmer John. Uh, Real Dirt on Farmer John from 2005. Um, I found a, a link to this video. It's got, I believe, <laughs> German subtitles uh, under it, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll include that down below. This one is a really interesting film extremely quirky interesting follows the life of this farmer who came from a you know a lineage of farmers in northern illinois and who you know of course were previously very you know traditional agriculture all the different things you know he came of age in the 60s and 70s so there's got like a lot of uh, hippie uh, kind of things going on there uh, people thought that he was like running a cult at one point on his farm there's lots of intrigue and just interesting lessons in addition to farming about um, I guess re respecting others and, and differences and I don't know, just a lot of stuff that I I, I, I found very interesting uh, but then it talks about how he was able to turn his traditional farm around into a CSA model that now a lot of members of the CSA helped him buy you know land and expand the farm so really just interesting you're just following this one person's journey along his lifetime of being raised as a farmer falling out of it coming back to it you know, losing part of the farm. It's just a very interesting story um, with lots of really cool archival footage. Um, he had a, you know, his mom bought a camera in the 50s and just started filming. And so there's lots of cool footage there uh, with that. So The Real Dirt on Farmer John, great film. Um, Gather, now Gather is uh, not so much like an agricultural film, is a film that follows different groups of Native American tribes 
uh, or Native Americans and their sort of exploration of their traditional indigenous food cultures and food sovereignty, which I uh, found really, really interesting because a lot of times when I am thinking about um, you know, sustainable agriculture here in Kentucky on my own property, I start to think about, look, well, what were people doing before me, before uh, colonizers came and took over the land? Um, because, you know, there's this misconception that, you know, Native Americans were just, you know, living in harmony and just roaming about and just picking stuff off the trees. No, they were actively farming and cultivating and managing the land um, through fire and selective breeding and actually planting crops. You know, that's where we got, you know, corn and all these great um, squashes and beans and different things. So like they weren't just, you know, out and about in the woods. They were actively farming, but in a much different way that created all of what like the ecosystems of North America that we kind of know and think about. So I would definitely check out that film. You know, it's all centered more on uh, Western tribes, it looks at, you know, uh, fisheries and uh, traditional food ways, buff uh, bison, buffalo. Um, so definitely check out Gather. And then the last kind of film that I want to talk about that's like a, a major production film um, is Farming While Black. Now this is one that I haven't seen because it's not released yet, so hopefully that'll come out soon. But I, this film, I, I saw lots of um, sort of promos for it, and it's been at several film festivals, the DC Film Festival, which I used to love, the Environmental Film Festival when I lived back in DC. And I think that this film is very important because when you look at a lot of films about farming and homesteading, um, they are predominantly um, white people uh, who are in them. So, uh, you know, people of color are very underrepresented um, in those films because they're very underrepresented in uh, farming. Um, you know, they, they used to have a very large portion of agriculture in the early 1900s were uh, farmers, made up farmers. I think it was like 10%, I think. That's what I have in my notes. In 1910, black farmers owned 14% of all American farmland. And now that is, you know, below 2%, maybe, yeah, well below 2%, um, you know, as a result of racism, discrimination, and disposition. I think that that is an interesting film because if we're going to have a truly sustainable, you know, agricultural system, everybody needs to be involved. Uh, and I think there needs to be spaces for um, people of all walks of life, all colors, creeds, nationalities. So I think that that's going to be a, a great film, excited for when that comes out streaming. But then, speaking of, I mentioned film festivals several times. Uh, I uh, love environmental film festivals, and I had the opportunity to actually submit a film that I made for this YouTube channel to a film festival called Abundance Plus. Abundance Plus is put on by Justin Rhodes. Maybe you've come across him um, through his YouTube channel, um, his book, The Rooted Life. But he is putting on a film festival uh, that airs um, starting uh, next Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Let me pull up the date so I have it correctly. So that would be the March 22nd, 23rd, 24th of the year 2024. Uh, so that would be streaming every night uh, different films that you can sign up for free. Links down below. But I'm mentioning this because the film that I submitted is a finalist. It will be streamed on Saturday uh, along with a lot of other uh, very cool sounding films. You know, I haven't, haven't seen them yet. Um, they're going to be, you know, YouTubers like me, you know, big time kind of like professional filmmakers. So I think it's going to be a lot of really cool stuff. There, it's only streaming those days during those times. I think there'll be a playback for like 24 hours. Um, so you have to like watch it live, which I think is really awesome. I'm going to go to a local watch party and hang out with people, uh, you know, in person and, and watch these. So they have those watch parties. So you can sign up, see if there's a watch party near you, uh, meet like-minded folks, uh, which I'm really excited to do. So that's the Abundance Plus Film Festival. It's this upcoming weekend. Yours truly, Tyler Lloyd, um, has a... Uh, film in it that, that I made about my dad and gardening. I'll also link to that down uh, below, but check out that film festival or, uh, you know, just Abundance Plus in general. So links to everything I've described below. Uh, and I'm really excited that I, I won this film festival. That's something I made. Um, other Someone else thought it, it was like good enough that it should be distributed um, to a wider audience, which, you know, is, I don't know, pretty, pretty awesome. And it was a film about my dad, uh, something that like, uh, views wise has been one of the least viewed videos in the past year, but it has been one of the videos that like meant the most to me. So it's kind of that like 
um, validation of that. It was uh, pretty pretty awesome. So uh, check out that uh, film festival uh, next weekend, the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, March 2024. If you have other films about um, sustainable agriculture, food systems, homesteading that you think are awesome, it could even be you know YouTube videos that you found interesting. I know I've got several YouTube videos uh, that were on my list, or at least two. Uh, so definitely check uh, like. Let me know, uh, links down below. Um, usually it blocks links uh, when you, you send links to things on uh, comments. So I'll be trying to monitoring those and like accepting them um, so, that, so that they come through because I want you to actually post the link, especially if it's a, a YouTube video, uh, so people can easily find it. Um, add to the conversation of you know, different things that you've seen and watched that you really found um, useful, enjoyable, enlightening, and insightful. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's, that's it, that's my video. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it. Again, my name is Tyler Lloyd. I make uh, videos about living a happier, healthier, more sustainable life. A lot of time out in my garden, but I'm gonna go inside right now because it's uh, just a little tad chilly and I'm gonna get my second cup of coffee for the day. Wish you the best, talk to you later, bye.